Hello everyone and welcome to another very nice game uh, that was also played in the Bilbao Masters 2012. Uh, yesterday if you've seen a game where Corona had the white pieces, uh, he played also against Magnus Carlsen, uh, but that was a game from round 1 of that event. This is a game from round 6 of that event, as we've already mentioned, it's a double round robin. Uh, and uh, in the previous game Carlsen played the French defense against Caruana and it will be very interesting because in this game Caruana will play the French defense against Carlsen. Uh, but before we check out the game we do have to figure out uh, what color was Carlsen's suit in the previous video. Now in the previous video I've shown you this photo uh, and asked you what color is this suit. Uh, I said that it, okay it's a, it's a red brownish suit but uh, surely it has uh, some sophisticated color and a lot of you really chipped in with your with your very nice comments So let's check out some of those comments and uh, solve this mystery of the suit color uh, So as you can see uh, there are a lot of comments uh, on this topic uh, When you see that Magnus is wearing almost the same color as Agat Mater in this video not really regarding uh, uh, well solving the mystery but also a very nice comment uh, then Mr. Uh, Mr. Vibhav Agrawal says, I guess the color of Carlson's suit is maroon. So maroon is one of the, one of the answers. Uh, Mr. Arrow Ghost also mentioned something about the boat model. Not really sure what the story behind it is, but he does say, uh, the suit color Carlson uh, wears uh, looks like dried out blood. Burgundy, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, normally uh, I wear black and dark blue, but uh, those are the standard blazer colors I wear. Uh, then Mr. Leo Vinci says, uh, GM Ben Feingold says, opposite colors are not a draw if there are both rooks in the game. Uh, mentioning uh, probably about uh, the opposite color Bishop's Endgame that uh, was pr uh, present in the previous video. But also a very nice comment that we're going to use in this uh, video as well. Uh, then we have Jimmy Erwald, uh, the fancy color you are looking for is burgundy, so uh, we have burgundy and maroon for, <laughs> for now. Uh, Marcus says that uh, I guess the color of uh, his suit is called the maroon. Uh, color is maroon by MHD Shakur. And then Yahya Olama says I'm not a color expert, but I would like to think that it is a dark wine colored suit. Uh, then Mr. Monty Tank Tank Killer says that uh, the color of Carlson's suit is actually uh, RAL uh, 8012. And uh, while this is a very professional answer, it doesn't really help us solve the answer, but also he mentions that it is a mix of three colors. Uh, red pear, uh, chili oil and spice apple. In other words, the color is as uh, indefinable uh, as Carlson's openings sometimes. Uh, then we have the suit looks like a plum color, then I guess you could call that color Bordeaux. Uh, also, this is a new suggestion to be Bordeaux. Uh, that's a wine color suit. Then we have uh, a comment by Leroy Jenkins. Uh, the name of the red-brown color is Burgundy, and then we have Niraj uh, Desai says that Burgundy colored suit, uh, a place in France known for its wine, which has a specific color known as Burgundy, uh, vast knowledge of sorts. Uh, but then Mr. Drocentric uh, answers that the color was named after the wine, uh, which is derived from the red-brown grape skins that was the predominant variety in the Burgundy region. Not all Burgundy wines have a Burgundy color, some are white and pink. So also this uh, discussion about the suits also uh, brought us this very nice discussion about uh, 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 wine varieties uh, in Burgundy. So there you have it. Uh, it's either uh, Burgundy, Maroon or Bordeaux or uh, something in between, but uh, now our vast knowledge of colors has definitely been uh, expanded. Uh, but okay, without further ado, Carlsen in this game has the white pieces, it's a game from round 6 and he opens with e4. Uh, we have e6, like we said, Carlsen played uh, the French defense against Caruana, and Caruana also plays the French against Carlsen here. And now we have d3, a very uh, uh, rare uh, reply to the French, uh, which is the King's Indian attack against the French. Uh, and okay, Car Caruana immediately challenges the center. We have d5, and now knight to d2. Uh, knight to f6, knight g to f3, knight to c6, and now c3. Uh, we have bishop to d6. Exchanging in the center doesn't really give you anything, it's just a meaningless exchange, so we're not going to go into that. Uh, bishop to d6 and now bishop to e2. Uh, we have castles, uh, castles by Carlsen as well, and now a5, not allowing uh, white to start expanding on the queen side. Uh, and Carlsen uh, goes rook to e1, uh, develops the rook, and now will prepare uh, to develop uh, th this light square bishop somehow differently, as he did already play this pawn on d3, so y you can't really push it all the way. Uh, most likely he will play something like g3 and then fianchetto the bishop via f1 and g2. Uh, e5. Uh, e5 is a very uh, committal move. Uh, it's uh, not easy to 
to find a useful move for black. So you do have to develop the light square bishop, somehow you do have to develop the queen and you do have to connect your rooks. So Caruana decides to change the structure, uh, uh, the pawn structure and the the character of the game by, by changing this uh, formation in the center, e5. Uh, we have e captures on d5 by Carlsen, knight captures on d5 and now knight to c4 by Carlsen. Uh, which is a, a very nice uh, square for the knight, as it can't really be moved from there. If you try to kick it away with b5, you, white will always capture on d6. Uh, and then it's questionable if this uh, advancement on the queen side is uh, favorable for black. Uh, so instead, uh, after this knight to c4 move, we have rook to e8. Uh, and Carlsen replies with bishop to f1. Now the rook is also controlling the e-file. Uh, but now, uh, as Corona did play this, to be able to develop further, a bishop to g4 now, developing the bishop. Also comes at the, the right moment, as Carlsen did play bishop to f1, so now the knight is definitely pinned. Uh, h3, questioning the whereabouts of this, uh, future whereabouts of this bishop immediately, does Corona want to capture on f3? Uh, not likely, if captures and queen captures, then also your d knight on d5 is attacked, you have to uh, take care of that. Uh, so first, bishop to h5, and here g3. Uh, g4 also seems possible, but uh, it would be uh, too much a draft around the, the white king, you know, for good taste. Uh, we have knight to b6. Here Caruana questions uh, Carlsen's knight on c4, uh, but the problem now is if you capture on d6, then the queen can also capture on d6. Uh, so here Car Carlsen takes um, a very important decision, uh, and he decides to capture the knight on b6. We have knight captures, pawn captures, and here bishop to g2, fincaroing this bishop. Uh, and now, if you look at this position, uh, the material on the board is still pretty much uh, equal. Uh, but one thing you uh, do have, not pretty much, it's exactly equal, but one thing you do have to realize uh, is that uh, because of these uh, doubled pawns, uh, white pawn structure is better. Uh, but it's uh, far too early in the game to take advantage of uh, such a weakness. Uh, but if you imagine that all of the pieces are off the board, so all of the pieces, the rooks, the queens, and you imagine only the pawns are here, uh, then white, if white would, for example, play a4, then this one uh, a pawn could control uh, black's entire queen side, and this is a very important uh, thing to, to notice. Uh, but we're going to get back to that uh, sometime later. So b5, uh, he wants to be able to meet a4, as if white gets a4 in immediately, then, like we said, this pawn will control the entire black, black queen side. Uh, we have b5 and now a4 nonetheless, but now Caruana has b4. Uh, we have bishop to e3, Carlsen develops a piece, uh, bishop to c7, and now comes queen to b3. And this queen to b3 is also a very nice move because, uh, you, well, your pawn on d3 is somewhat weak and uh, it's hard to do anything about it. Uh, but developing the queen to b3 is a very nice because, uh, well, uh, it's a question, can you capture on d3? And you have to figure out a lot of moves. For example, if queen captures on d3, uh, then rook a to d1, and now what do you do with the queen? Where, well, you have a couple of options. If you go queen to a6, uh, then this bishop to f1 is a very uh, unpleasant move. Uh, you, the queen has nowhere to go. You have to play b5, and then, uh, well, after this in-between move of g4, bishop moves, and now a captures on b5 uh, will win you the game as this attacks both uh, the queen and the knight. Uh, on the other hand, after queen captures on d3 and rook a to d1, uh, you could also go to g6, but then g4 simply traps the bishop on h5, very unfortunate. Uh, and uh, while you can capture two pawns uh, for your bishop, it will not be all that impressive. Uh, white will have a very nice development and uh, will, well, your two pawns will not mean all that much. Uh, also, after rook a to d1, you could also go here, but then simply knight to h4 wins the queen, as now b the knight... Uh, uh, removes uh, both f5 and g6 from the black queen, so there's really nowhere to go. Uh, and lastly, uh, but not leastly, uh, queen to f5 of, co of course runs into g4, again winning the bishop. And while you can still give, give up the bishop for two pawns, uh, it will not be all that impressive. Uh, so queen to b3, a very nice move, very nicely calculated that the, uh, the d3 pawn is, uh, you know, uh, off the table. It's actually on the table, but it's off the table if, you know, it's, it's a funny expression to use in chess, uh, it would seem. Uh, but okay, h6, uh, and now comes queen to c4. Now the d uh, pawn is uh, uh, protected as black just made room for his queen on h7 if the d3 pawn would ever be captured. Uh, but okay, uh, bishop uh, b captures on c3. Uh, here capturing a pawn 
uh, Caruana comes with this very nice idea uh, of a temporary pawn sacrifice, uh, and uh, you'll see what, what he meant by this. Uh, B captures on C3, B captures on C3, and now E4. Uh, challenging this knight on f3, Carlsen captures, we have d captures uh, on e4, and now comes bishop captures on f3. Uh, bishop captures on f3, and now knight to e5. So this is all a very forced variation. Uh, only move for Carlsen is queen to e2. You do have to protect your bishop on f3. Also, your queen on c4 is under attack. So queen to e2, bishop, uh, knight captures on f3, queen captures on f3, and now comes queen to d3. Uh, with an attack against this weak c3 pawn, and also there is now a double attack against the e4 pawn as the rook is also attacking it. Uh, you would be able to solve all of your problems with bishop to d4, but unfortunately your queen is hanging now, so this is not possible. Uh, so first Carson plays king to g2, now bishop to d4 is definitely a big threat as uh, white would uh, save his pawn and be up a pawn. Uh, but Caruana doesn't allow it. Uh, we have queen captures on e4, and now bishop to d4. Uh, improving the position of the bishop and also protecting the pawn on c3. Uh, here, uh, you can't give up the queen for two rooks, if just in case any of you are wondering, because after captures, captures, and queen captures on b7, uh, both the rook and the bishop are under attack, and now black would also lose a bishop, so a queen and a bishop are, is much stronger than two rooks, obviously. Uh, so after bishop to d4, uh, we have queen captures on f3, king captures on f3, and now comes b6. Uh, and now if you look at this position, uh, you can see that the material is completely equal. Uh, you can also see that Carlsen's bishop on d4 is somewhat more active than Caruana's bishop on c7. Uh, also, Carlsen's king uh, is a lot more active on f3 than Caruana's king on g8. Uh, but the one very important thing you have to realize is that both uh, players have a dark square bishop. Uh, and uh, Caruana's pawns on the queen side are on dark squares, which makes them a target, while Carlsen's pawn, uh, although uh, they are isolated pawns, uh, Carlsen's a4 pawn is on a light square, and his pawn from light square is uh, blockading both of Caruana's dark square pawns. So, while Caruana's pawns are targets, uh, Carlsen's a4 pawn, not so much. Uh, and the bishop uh, and pawn are complementing each other pretty well here. So, a small advantage for Carlsen, and it will be very interesting to see what he does about this. Uh, if you capture the rook and the rook captures, exchanging one pair of rooks, uh, and go something like rook to b1 to challenge this b6 pawn, then rook to e6 uh, will defend it. So instead, uh, Carlsen doesn't bother himself with this, he goes rook a to b1, challenges the b6 pawn immediately, and now comes rook a to c8, uh, an active defense, and now if you capture on b6, uh, you have to go into this rook captures uh, on e1. Uh, but, uh, of course, it doesn't work as it loses you the game. Rook captures, and now you've just blundered a piece. Uh, so, after rook a to c8 by Caruana, we have rook to e4. Uh, now, the rook on e4 is obviously well protected. Uh, g6, uh, and here we have... Uh, if, uh, instead of this g6 move, uh, yeah, you try something else, uh, there's... Uh, well, you don't really gain anything by exchanging here, you just improve the position of the white king. So, g6, preparing f5. And now we have g4. g4, a very interesting move, because if you play bishop captures on b6, uh, this this is actually uh, a variation that ends in a, in a forced draw. Uh, because after rook captures, king captures, and rook to b8, uh, pinning the bishop, uh, then you have bishop captures on c7, rook captures on b1, and bishop captures on a5. So Carlsen would uh, end up with two pawns um, uh, extra, but he would have uh, he would be down the exchange. Uh, but still, after f5, uh, king goes off the board, and now you will attack the a4 pawn, which now is a weakness, as it's on a light square and the rook can attack it. Uh, you will start to push your pawn, and now rook captures on a4. We have bishop to d2, getting the bishop out of the way, but now rook to a2, attacking the bishop again. Uh, bishop captures on h6, but now comes rook captures on f2. Uh, and here, uh, neither side will be able to win this, because after white starts pushing his pawn, black will simply approach with the king. Uh, bishop to g5, create a wall against the black king, but now simply a rook to c2, uh, and uh, the pawn isn't going anywhere. King d6, you will simply control the c file. If you push c7, then rook to d2 check will simply... Uh, continue checking the king, and if you try king to e6, uh, okay, you can't go rook to e3 with check, but you will simply go rook back to c3 and again control the c-pawn. So, it uh, would be a forced draw, it would seem, uh, if bishop captures on b6 is played here. Uh, but such ideas uh, are definitely possible, maybe in the future, so, you know, black has to keep an eye on this. Uh, g4 by Carlsen, uh, still 
keeping everything, uh, all, all of his options open, you know, just uh, perhaps uh, improving the position. Uh, king to f8, and now comes h4. Uh, we have rook captures on e4, king captures on e4, and now comes rook to e8 with check. Uh, king back to d3, uh, and now rook to e6, defending uh, the b6 pawn as it is attacked twice. Uh, we have bishop to e3, attacking the h6 pawn, king to g7, defending, uh, and now comes rook to b5. So little by little, Carlsen is uh, improving uh, the position of his pieces and gaining more activity. Uh, bishop to d8, uh, Karana attacks the h4 pawn, and here we have h5. Uh, and here, rook to d6 with check. If g captures on h5, then rook captures on h5. Uh, and here, black would uh, just have created more targets. Carlsen has these very nice pawns on light squares, uh, while Corona's b6 pawn and uh, the h6 pawn are on dark squares, which uh, make them a target for uh, for both the bishop and uh, Carlsen's rook. Uh, so instead, after h5, we have rook to d6 check. Carlsen goes uh, king to c4, and now comes rook to c6 with check. Uh, king to d5, attacking the rook, and now comes rook back to e6. Uh, if you play rook captures on c3, uh, then bishop captures on b6 is not what you would play, but rather bishop to d4 check, uh, you would win the rook and the game. Uh, I hope I didn't trick you too much there. Uh, so after king to d5, rook to e6, not allowing the king to approach, and also defending the rook. Uh, bishop to d4 check, we have king to f8, and now comes f4. So again, little by little, Carlsen is pu pushing forward. Uh, you know, if you just continue pushing your pawns forward, uh, eventually they will reach the last rank and will be promoted to a queen. Uh, bishop to c7, attacking the f4 pawn, and now even f5, attacking both the g6 pawn twice and the rook. Uh, rook to d6 check, king moves to e4, uh, and now comes rook to c6. Uh, and here, rook to b1. Uh, here, Carlsen doesn't gain anything by capturing here. First, he wants to prepare and bring this rook over to h1, uh, because after the exchange on g6 happens, then this h6 pawn will become weak, uh, as the bishop is covering this dark square diagonal very nicely. Uh, we have king to e8, and now comes h captures on g6. f captures on g6, and now rook to h1, uh, attacking the h6 pawn. And now there's a problem. If you play g5, uh, then f6 wins you the game, as now it blocks off the rook's defense of the h6 pawn. White will simply capture it, and it, it will be over very quickly. Uh, on the other hand, uh, if instead uh, of this rook of this g5 you play uh, captures on f5, then g captures on f5, uh, bishop to d8, preventing f6, but you don't really prevent f6, because white will simply push f6. Uh, and now, of course, if you capture, then comes rook captures on h6, and uh, it's a double attack against your bishop, king f7, but this uh, simply, uh, you know, trades everything into a winning endgame. Simply, king c6 captures, captures, and you will promote either pawns. Uh, so, after rook to h1, uh, we have king to f7, Bakarwana, and now, uh, of course, uh, here, if you play something like uh, king to d5 was played, but you can't capture immediately. If you capture immediately, then g captures on f5 with check, uh, would of course uh, lose you an entire rook after rook captures on h6. So after king to f7, uh, we have king to d5 attacking Karwana's rook on c6, and now comes rook to d6 with check. King c4, and now g captures on f5. g captures on f5 and bishop to d8. Uh, so uh, we have f6. And here there's really not a lot of things you can do with black. Rook captures on h6 is a threat. Uh, if king to g6, then you get rook to g1 check, king f7, and rook to g7 check. King to e6 and rook to h7, now the rook will win the h6 pawn only from uh, from behind. Uh, so after f6, uh, we have uh, bishop captures on f6, but now it's not uh, immediately uh, a disaster, because after rook captures on h6, which was played in the game, uh, the rook is on a dark square, not on a light square, like in the previous variation, so you can defend it with bishop to e7. Uh, this was played in the game, but still, rook captures, bishop captures, and now comes king to b5. Uh, and now, of course, you will lose the pawns, but uh, still Caruana will try uh, will try to be tricky. Uh, we have king to e6, uh, bishop captures, now comes uh, king to uh, d7, and now c4. Uh, king to c8, we have bishop captures on a5, king to b7, and here is a perfect moment for you to blunder the entire game. You are up two pawns, but it will be very easy to throw this game uh, if you play something like c5. For those of you who would play c5 here, uh, you know, better to see it here and not play it in a serious game because you will be very sorry after the game. Uh, for those of you who are maybe new to chess or new to this channel, 
Uh, we're just going to show why this doesn't work, uh, because black can simply sacrifice his final piece here. Uh, and after king captures on c5, yes, you are up a piece and up a pawn, but uh, it's the wrong piece and the wrong pawn. <laughs> uh, the black king can simply occupy a light square in the corner, and, uh, well, you will not be able to kick the king out of uh, uh, his uh, cozy light square, because you have a dark square bishop, and you will not be able to promote your pawn. Uh, one such variation might go bishop to c3, preparing to push the pawn. Uh, black will simply move the king back and forth. And after you start pushing your passed pawn, uh, a6, king a8, now you run out of moves. Because you can either push a7, and now it's a stalemate, the black king has nowhere to go. Uh, or you can simply move the bishop, but you can't play something like bishop to e5, it will still be stalemate. And whatever you play, black will simply move the king back and forth, and you will never, never be able to kick it away from a light square, uh, because you have a dark square bishop. Uh, so, uh, after king to b7, you have to be careful not to blunder it like this, so bishop to b4, Carlson wants to exchange bishops, Caruana of course declines this, uh, bishop to f4, we have c5, now it's okay to push the c-pawn, king to a7, c6, uh, king to b8, and now a5. Uh, king to a7, uh, a6 now, uh, king to a8, and now bishop to c5. Uh, bishop back to b8, uh, we have king to c4, uh, now going uh, the other way. Uh, bishop to c7, king to, d, uh, king to d5, bishop to d8, king to e6, bishop to c7, now comes king to d7, uh, and now a5. Uh, again, it would be uh, Caruana leaves the possibility of Carlsen maybe playing c7, uh, which would again result in a draw after bishop captures and king captures. The, his king is already very nicely occupying the, this uh, a8 light square. Uh, but uh, after bishop to a5, Carlsen simply played bishop to e7, and here in this position Caruana resigned the game. So uh, a very nice retaliation uh, in the uh, second uh, half of the tournament, as it, it was a double round robin. He resigned because now after you play something like King a7, go after the a6 pawn, bishop to e8 will win you the game. You will either exchange and then the c pawn will be able to uh, promote, or you will move the bishop, for example, bishop to b4, and then again c7 will win the game after it captures and you will bring a queen into the game and win easily. So yeah, uh, bishop to e7, uh, after this move, uh, on move 66, uh, Fabiano Caruana resigned the game. So yeah, like we said, a very nice retaliation, and uh, I really do hope you, you enjoyed that discussion about colors and the grapes uh, and the color of uh, wine in general in, in Burgundy. Uh, I thought it was a very nice touch, but also I do hope you enjoyed this very nice game and this very nice endgame. Uh, how even at, at such a very young, uh, uh, at such a very uh, early uh, position, uh, let me just check Queen C4. Well, maybe even maybe even sooner. Uh, how important this was, uh, this this moment here of knight captures on b6, for example, uh, simply because this a4 was such a huge threat, and uh, it really paralyzed uh, Caruana's entire queen side for the rest of the game, and later it was, uh, well, uh, used uh, to, to a maximum to, to be able to push this uh, and uh, gain a full point. So yeah, uh, I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Abdullah Pasha, uh, Michael Castaño, Mario Encinosa, uh, Andrew uh, Spaltenstein, and uh, Luis Gomez for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon, hopefully, with some more interesting content. Perhaps we're going to check up some uh, other previous encounters between Carlson and Caruana as a warm-up for what comes on Friday. Uh, thank you all, and I will see you soon.